MRTRIX stores and displays imaging data in a format called MIF, or MRTRIX Image Format. MRTRIX is also able to read raw data in nifty format, but will output its files in MRTRIX format, labeled with a .MIF extension. To see how this works, navigate to the folder subcon02 sespreop dwi, which contains your diffusion data. One of the first pre-processing steps is converting the diffusion data to a format that MRTRIX understands. We will use the command MRI convert to combine the raw diffusion data with its corresponding BVAL and BVAC files so that we can use the combined file for future pre-processing steps. I'm going to copy and paste something from off screen, which you can find in the more info box down below. This command requires three arguments, the input, which is the raw diffusion weighted image file, an output file, which we will call here sub02 underscore dwi.mif, and an option called fslgrad, which requires the corresponding bvec and bval files, which we'll talk more about later. If you press enter, this only takes a moment to run. Before going further, as an aside, we want to make the rest of the tutorial easier to read. So I'm again going to copy and paste a command, which you can find down below, to move or rename all of the images to something easier and more compact to read. Returning to the tutorial, the output image sub02dwi can be read with the command mrinfo. Just supply it as an argument and press enter. The output from this command contains several pieces of information, such as the dimensions of the data set, as well as the voxel size, along with the commands that were used to generate the current file, which you can find in the command history field. Note that since this is a four-dimensional data set, the last dimension is time. In other words, this file contains 102 volumes, each one with dimensions of 96 by 96 by 60 voxels. The last dimension of the voxel size field which in this case has a value of 8.7, indicates the time it took to acquire each volume. This is also called the repetition time, or TR. The other files we need to check are the BVALs and BVEX files. The BVALs contain a single number per volume that indicates how large of a diffusion gradient was applied to the data. And the BVEX file contains a triplet of numbers per volume that shows in what directions the gradients were applied. It's important to make sure that the number of BVALs and the number of BVEX are the same as the number of volumes in the dataset. For example, we can find the number of volumes in the sub 2 dwi dataset by typing mrinfo-size, the name of the dataset, and then a pipe, awk, print, dollar sign four, which returns a value of 102, the number in the fourth field of the dimensions header that corresponds to the number of time points or volumes. We then compare this with the number of BVALs and BVEX by using awk to count the number of columns in each text file. The notation here may be slightly strange if you haven't used it before, but you can find more explanations in the more info box down below. In this case, it's important to know that both of these return a value of 102, the same as the number of volumes. MRTRIX, like the other imaging software packages we've covered in this book, has its own imaging viewer called MRView. For example, you can view the image that we created above by typing MRView sub02 dwi.mif. This opens up a single viewing pane of the axial slices. You can see all three viewing planes by clicking on View and then selecting Ortho View. By clicking and dragging the crosshairs, you can examine the whole brain from all three viewpoints. Note that we are seeing the first volume of a time series and that we can flip through the images by pressing the right and left arrow keys to scroll forward or backward through the volumes. The first volume that is displayed, which has a time series index of zero, looks like a typical T2 weighted functional image. We can verify this by comparing it with the B value for the first volume in the time series, which is zero. In other words, no diffusion gradients were applied. 
Now press the right arrow key to load the next volume in the time series. If you look at the BVAL file, would you expect this image to look similar or different to the one that you just saw, and why? Think about this as you load the next images in the time series, noting the intensity differences and how they correspond to the respective B values. If you find that the drop in intensity makes the image too dark to see, you can increase the brightness by clicking on Tool, View Options, and then entering a lower maximum value for the Intensity Scaling field. Now that you have learned some of the basic MR tricks commands and concepts, we will start to pre-process the data so that we can fit streamlines. All that, and more, in the next video.